Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome back to another episode of Tiny Tips with Tiff. So in this series, my goal is to be able to teach you guys on how to do skills in the NICU. And last week's episode, I shared with you guys how to do labs on babies, and hopefully that was helpful to you guys. But in this week's episode, I wanted to share with you guys how to insert an NG slash OG. So an NG is a nasal gastric and an OG is an orogastric. And basically those are tubes that we insert into our patients to be able to feed, vent them, pull out air, And that is the reason why we use those. And typically it depends on your hospital on which ones to use at a certain gestational age. So please read the policy for your hospital and which ones you use. But in this certain circumstance, I just wanna focus on how to insert one. So um, my mannequin doesn't allow me to be able to insert an NG, which goes through the nose. So I'm not gonna show you guys that specific example. I'm gonna focus on sharing with you guys how to insert an OG, which is oral. And basically that is something that we use a lot on our preemies especially to be able to do feedings or vent our patients so i wanted to share with you guys this skill and hopefully it is helpful to you and please let me know down in the comments below what other episodes you'd like me to do for this series and what skills you're interested in learning leave it down in the comment below and hopefully this is helpful to you so stay tuned all right you guys so welcome back to another episode of tiny tips with tiff and then this one we're gonna learn how to insert an ng slash og so my baby um doesn't have any holes for the nose for the nares for me to insert an NG, but the process is fairly similar for when you insert an OG. So I'm gonna show you guys. But the first thing is, of course, let's go through all the supplies you'll need. So you're gonna need your stethoscope and a little measuring tape. So this is just a paper measuring tape. And then these are the different types of OGs that we have. So it's all variable by size. So this one is a five French. And this one is a six and a half, which is very common that we use this one. And then this is an eight. So make sure to look at the policy on what your hospital requirements are for each patient's age, weight, gestational age. So it's just variable. Um, We use the five French for a lot of our preemies. And then the six and a half we'll use um, for our, our somewhat preemies, older kids. So this is the one I'm gonna use today. And you're going to need duoderm. So usually it usually comes in this kind of packet. And this is a duoderm. It's just to protect the baby's skin. So I've already cut up a little square piece. Make sure it fits underneath your baby's chin. And then you're going to need a piece of tegoderm. So this one is usually something we'll use for like IVs and stuff, but I like to cut it in half. and that way you have two pieces. So we typically leave one in the drawer and then we use one for right now. So I'm gonna open this and leave it ready for me. So I have two pieces cut out, my duoderm, my tegoderm, and I'll leave it right next to me. I have my OG, everything else I'll just put aside. And then, so these are kind of the supplies you need. Um, For this circumstance, I don't have sterile water. I typically like to use sterile water. Um, There's some nurses that like to use like um, lubricant. Personally, I don't like using it because it's very thick and I feel like it just ends up clogging the back of the baby's throat and it's very uncomfortable. So typically what we'll do is um, I like to use star water and I'll dip the end of my OG in some water just to get it nice and um, wet and that way it kind of helps to lubricate it a little bit. It's easier to slide in. So first things first is always make sure to wrap your baby and swaddle your baby because your baby is going to fight you like crazy. I don't have a proper swaddle blanket So I'm just gonna swaddle my baby in one of my pillowcases at home. Keep my arm, the arms of my baby tight. And that way they cannot fight me. And so my baby is nicely wrapped. Um, This is not the best swaddle technique since I don't have a proper swaddle blanket. So sorry guys, but this is gonna make do for now so my baby doesn't fight. All right, and so of course wear your gloves. I don't have gloves in this um scenario but of course when you're dealing with this at work make sure to always wear gloves so here is the paper tape when you do your measurement you want to start from the mouth all the way to the back of the ear and loop it down to 
the xiphoid process. So when I tell my new guide nurses where that is, typically it's around the breastbone and I do one centimeter down. I also forgot to mention to you guys that you're gonna need an OG um, feeding syringe. So make sure to have one of these. I typically like to use like a 10 ml, 12 ml syringe. So make sure to have this with you at bedside. So I'm gonna keep that open and ready to go. And then of course, I have my OG, so make sure not to ever touch the tip of it. Leave it nice and sterile. I like to make sure to keep it in the packaging, and what I like to do is take the end of it and attach my syringe ready to go. So I will leave it on like this, and that way it's ready for me, and I'll keep this at bedside. The first thing I always do is stick my duoderm on first. I'll stick it underneath my baby's chin. Get it as close to lip as possible, but don't get it on the lip. So it's gonna look something like this. So you guys can see that. Okay, so I have my Tegaderm ready for me when I'm ready. And I have my stethoscope, so I usually like to keep it around my neck. So there's two ways you can do it, um, depending on your hospital policy. A lot of places ask for you to check the pH, which is the place I'm currently working out. They have us check the pH. Um, my previous workplace had us just auscultate. So I'm just gonna do both options for you so that you are um, kind of familiar with the two options you could do. So we have decided that again, back of the nose or from the nose to the back of the ear to the chest and one more centimeter down. So like 23 is where we're going. All right. And so if your baby is settled, you can get your tube ready. This is a very long OG tube. So I like to start sticking it in. I don't know if it's gonna go all the way down just cause this is a mannequin. So let's just pretend. And let's say I'm going in all the way down. Of course you wanna hit the back of your throat, right? And then let's say we're at 23. So 23 is right here. And of course when you see the black dot right here. So there's little black dots on this that say the numbers. So Let's say I've hit the 23, right? Most likely your baby is gonna start coughing, gagging, screaming at you. So you just have to make sure that they're swaddled tightly. And so when you hit the 23, you wanna make sure that hits the lip because we always count by the lips. And then once I'm ready to go in the placement that I want it to, I will hold this with my hand and with my other hand, try to one hand grab my tigerderm piece and stick it on, okay? So it should look something like this. Of course the tube is in the baby, but mannequin sake, this is what it's gonna look like, okay? So I have my oral syringe. I'm gonna pull back, see if I get any um, residual. If I can see if the baby has residual, typically that means you're in the right place, especially if you see that you have um, well digested residual, then that typically means you're in the right place. So if I was doing pH testing, I would just take my syringe out with my residual in it and get my pH strips and just put some on the pH strips. But I don't have any pH strips with me, so at my old hospital we actually just auscultated. So I usually did two mLs of air, attach it to my syringe. I always keep the tegaderm on still. I don't like to peel that off yet because if you peel it off and you're not in the right place, then you have to undo the whole thing. So I leave it on and then I'll unwrap my baby to where I could see the belly. I get my stethoscope. Make sure you can hear and put it over the belly and quickly push in the two mLs of air quickly. So typically you should hear the air getting pushed through and if you are, and if you do hear it, then you're in the right place. If you don't hear it, then you might not be and you might have to do it over. So you may try to push in one more centimeter, pull out one more centimeter and see um, if you could hear it by pushing in two mLs of air. But I, I heard it, let's say in this case, I heard it. So I know I'm in proper placement. And then I will peel off my um, tegaderm. and then it should look like that, okay? And then I can undo this, you know, clamp it closed. And that's usually it, that's how I insert an OG. Um, some hospitals may require you to do pH testing and if you don't get any residual at all, then you may have to get an X-ray to check for placement. That is really the gold standard of how things should always be done by getting an X-ray, but of course in the NICU, 
OGs and NGs get pulled out all the time because babies have arms that they like to grab things with and we can't keep doing an x-ray for every single baby. So pH testing is also another gold standard and then you can also auscultate just to be sure. And I make sure with every assessment that I just auscultate for my own personal um, safety for the baby, I just do it with every assessment just to make sure we're in proper placement. And when you assess your baby, you always wanna make sure that you're checking where it's supposed to be. So if I said it's at 23, then it's at 23. And if you get in report that it's at 23 then it should be at 23 so always make sure so hopefully this was helpful so i hope you guys learned something from this week's episode on how to insert an og please let me know down in the comments below what other skills you'd like to learn in the NICU and hopefully i'll do another episode on that so thank you for watching this video and i'll see you guys next time bye